But listen. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, you ready? Boom! I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Alright, welcome back, fellow shenaniganders from around the world, to another episode of Countdown, a restoration uh, playlist, I guess, series, whatever you call it. First things first is, you just gotta love the LEDs with the attract mode with the Pascal flipboard. Isn't that a pretty sight? Well, I've did some play test games everything seems to be behaving since the last episode displays are still looking good so pretty much the last thing on the to-do list is fixing the sound so let's zoom out here so I started researching well in the past already like last week I started researching how to you know what might be the issue uh, with the soundboard, which, as you know, is not in the back box, but I'm going to show you something after. Here's the soundboard, okay? So, my thoughts were to focus on this. Maybe I should repin that connector for starters. Well, that was suggested. The connector could be an issue, but got doing some reading. And I noticed this before, but I never really actually thought to implement or apply. Let's see here. I was just reading on the uh, Pascal page. Somewhere, somewhere. If this isn't too old, there might be onboard sound emulation. Oh, there it is three tone output selection and they said these two jumpers are what enable or disable using the Pascal speech or um, sound generator so why use a friggin 40 year old uh, soundboard when I can just enable the Pascal to do its thing so what I apparently I need to do is Here's the volume for your three-tone output there. And uh, there is um, somewhere to hook up your speakers. And you can hook up two speakers. I saw it on the manual. Is this it? Yeah, look at that. One speaker, two speaker. So. I don't know exactly how to do that yet, but maybe I can steal the speaker wires from wherever they're connected. And where are the speaker wires connected to? They must run up here somewhere. But I only have one speaker, right? These Gottliebs only had one speaker. Let's look under the bum bum here. Yeah. That must be it, way at the front. So, before I actually hack any connectors, maybe I'll just disconnect the soundboard and just kind of temporary, temporarily jumper in some wires. So I think, how's this gonna work? One goes in ground and one goes in five volts. One goes in ground, one goes in 12 volts. Like, I'm not really sure. I'll have to read the manual. Although, I have, and I still don't understand the very, very brief instructions. There must be more. Let's see. Two jumpers on the left, four pins of J17. That's J17. There's your jumpers. Enable or disable each of the two loudspeakers. Outputs number one and number two depending on the number of loudspeakers connected. Okay, so that is right here. So you got loudspeaker number one, positive output, ground, 
left, center, right. Oh, see this one is a little bit different. They got one on the ground here, black on ground, red on number one, which is like a positive there. So, am I putting it on five volts or am I putting it on 12 volts? Each loudspeaker is to be connected with the cable provided, there is a cable provided, to strip if needed, the ground screw clamp connector is shown. This is the most modern variation of this Pascal board. Mine is, my board's like 12 years old, I think it was, or it's from 2012. Anyway, so I think I'm gonna try this before I bother messing with the original soundboard, because doesn't that make sense? Advanced soundboard is for later games with more funkier sounds, Totem, Hulk, Genie, etc. So I'm going to maybe um, remove these jumpers, plug in the speaker to this connector, and see if I can uh, make magic. I'll be right back. Well, I tried to just reseat this connector. That didn't work. So you got the quick connects on here. Just gotta remember, white goes closest to me, green goes here. So I think if I just disconnect them like that and then wire these directly to the Pascal board, then maybe we'll be in business. So I gotta find me some wire and some alligator clips. Okay, I found it easier to just grab this one speaker that I have and connect it rather than trying to feed up long wires up through the neck and uh, for it all to not work. So audio, audio, I just don't know my audio at all. Is this sort of positive and a negative or something on this thing somewhere? I don't see any positive and negative, but I'm sure there is. I don't want to blow up the speaker. I connected it like this. Ground on one, and then speaker number one on the other. Is that right? Like, I do not know what I'm doing. But when I did connect these two wires and touched the second one to the terminal, I did hear the speaker make a little noise. So it makes me think that it may be wired up possibly correctly. And then where's my jumpers? Okay, so speaker number one. Did you see that? Did you see that? If not, so speaker number one, remove that jumper. Okay, there it is. Don't let me forget that. All right, well, here goes nothing. Let's hope I don't blow up any speaker or anything. Let's zoom out, try and steady up here. Okay, as soon as I turn this on, we will or we will not hear sound. Uh. -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. No. I think I didn't hook that up right. Okay, I saw the sound light flash. I wonder if there's some error message showing because I screwed. Empty out hole. Oh, that's it. Okay, well, I'll put a ball in there, but. Okay. So maybe I have wired backwards. Okay, one moment. I'll see if I can figure this out. All right. I was about to post in the pinball repair group. Started taking photos and tried variations of swapping these wires with the sa original soundboard connected with the disconnected and tried a few variables and I'm like well let's just throw that jumper back on in case I had it wrong and check it out oh yeah I also thought to turn up the volume there's a volume pot here it's like well maybe the volume's just down 
but that turned out not to be the case. But I figured it out. <clears throat> I had the jumper on. Well, I had it off actually when it was supposed to be on. But listen. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, you ready? Boom! Okay, that's as far as I've got so far. Let's uh, plunge a ball and see what it sounds like. <laughs> Maybe let's not. Well, we haven't heard is the proper uh, countdown bonus yet. Countdown audio. Yeah, so... Look at that, we do not need to mess with the original soundboard. That is freaking awesome. That is what the P1X4 is after all. Four boards, reduced to one. No CPU, no driver board, no power supply, no soundboard. Here we go. Hear that? First time hearing the thousands bonus. Beautiful. So. Here's my to-do list. Chime sound. Actually, you know what? I probably still want to vacuum the cab and then clean the glass. Um, oh, clean rubber, that's off my list. That's basically the last thing. So what I will do is get some long enough wires now, connect it to the speaker in the bottom, and boom, we've got all of our sound that is pretty sweet all right you think i got enough wire do, 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 do. i just added a joint there and a joint there so i could add even more wire and more wire and more wire hey we could just feed the speaker right through the friggin coin door so yeah i think i had enough wire but I had to add that because the first length was not long enough. Okay, I was just uh, editing the last video back at Countdown here. But I noticed my 5X wasn't blue. So let's see. I think I fixed it. And actually, when I went to change it, could you believe it? It was incandescent. I somehow missed that one altogether. But now everything makes sense. Yeah, I got green for the green targets, yellow for the yellow, red for the red, and blue for the blue, not light turquoise. Both these guys got me. Okay, so I'm going to finish up with this wiring to the speaker. Then our sound issue will be resolved. And then I might just maybe rebuild all 16 drop targets we'll see though i mean it might be a big job it might be an easy job but i have a set of them and might as well install them right mark valuk this is kind of the temporary home of your night light pop bumper cap you sent me 10 or 100 points when lit. Thanks again for that, brother. That's pretty friggin' sweet. Okay, let's move over to Countdown. I was gonna clean all this up before I hit record, but oh well. Uh, I will do that after. So, here are my green wires. Zip tied here, zip tied here. Trim them to be a nice length. They're soldered on. I tested to make sure they were soldered on correctly. I don't know for sure if you can screw that up. If there is a polarity to that or not. Probably there is. Okay, and then remove the old soundboard. We've upgraded from 40 year old technology to the flipboard, which is, it's brand new technology, but my flipboard's 10 years old. So we moved up a few decades. And then I just zip the old connector there and the old speaker clips, I just um, put some electrical tape on, zipped them in there, tucked them all in, 
and it's all nice and tidy and yeah so now i'm gonna i, I reinstalled my coin neck i'm gonna clean up all this crap in here give it a vacuum and then that will be done and then we'll start investigating the drop target situation it's much better cabinet is all vacuumed out wasn't really bad to begin with but it's always better after all right might have to do the old trick where we flip the play field upside down i'll show you how that works if i do that which i may i'll be back mmm look what i see evidence and also here mm-hmm somebody's been getting crazy with the grease just like they did on the coil uh, sleeves so I think we're gonna have to dive in to all the drop target mechs yay all right here's the old Gottlieb system one flip the play field trick Jamie come down to uh, switch her laundry and I accosted her and she helped me to do this so thank you honey uh, I could have tried it on my own but much easier with four hands instead of two but this is a good opportunity to address the underside of the play field clean all the under play field switches look for any hacks and change out 16 drop targets which shouldn't be too bad there's some trick uh, that Corey and Rob Noel do I forget what it is something to do with cutting the spaces between but I think that's on older EMs not system one so just even touching that I feel dirty okay yep I'm going to um, oh, I should clean these end stroke switches too. make sure those are adjusted nicely oh look at this there is tape on the end of this guy so that the metal doesn't touch the metal but not tape on that side so is that even really needed i don't think so but that's the stuff you look for when you got the play field flipped i think i'm too zoomed in the vacuum's in my way you get out of here so only a limited real estate down here all right let me go show you what I found. Okay. I actually found that Corey had one yellow drop target, the correct one. So I was just gonna re you know, install that one, but guess I've concluded since I found that I happened to have this. And it, it came with the machine, but it was a big lot and, I was, and it came with a bunch of miscellaneous parts. So I only just discovered that I have a whole friggin' set. So that's going in and it's gonna look friggin' awesome. Okay, halfway into uh, assembly number one. Now you never did see how nasty and gross this was when I took it apart, but uh, I'm using quad zero steel wool and a little bit of a soapy water cloth solution get in those grooves really good okay that's what i did i think my grooves are clean so i'll show you the next one just how nasty it was but now set that there uh we gotta remove some drop targets Um, I think I need another tool. Hold on. Where are my tools? Where are my tools? Okay, 
Okay, this wasn't the tool I was looking for, but I need to get at that spring here. You can't really see, but there we go. Oh, and I guess I'm gonna have to just drop it into the cabinet. Or, yeah, I could do that. I mean, I could loosen the bracket off on the other side, and I may do that, but I figure by the time I've done the fourth drop target bank, I'll have found the most efficient way to do it. And by that time, it'll have been too late. But, let's just do that. And that. Get in there. Oh, I lo oh, almost lost a spring. I have more springs if one vanished on me, but... Oh, there's another one popped right off. It's because I'm trying to be all, all quick and not bore you. Oh, shit, look at this. All four... All four of these little buggers popped off. Maybe it's better that way. I don't know. Because I did uh, mangle a couple of the loops, so I'll have to straighten those out. Now I'm going to clean up this gunk. And, um, you know, obviously taking a thing completely apart and cleaning every square inch of everything would be ideal. But I think I'm not going to do that. So it'll take me an extra. I figure this is going to take a couple hours. If I do that, take another couple hours. And initially I was just going to change one drop target. So I'm already further in the hole than I planned on being, uh, theoretically. But I think it'll just look awesome. So I'm excited to see what it'll look like. We'll do a before and after of the drop targets too because they are nasty. Okay, so the original drop targets are really not that bad. You can see why I was hesitant to even bother changing them out. I could literally just clean these up. All the feet are intact. But, you know, I have them. And they do look nice. And I can just save the old ones for um, spares. So, there's your before and after. Uh, doesn't that look a little better? Cleaner, shinier, and newer. All right, I'm gonna run out of time probably. So I might only just finish this one drop target bank tonight and work on the rest on another episode. So I think I'm gonna have to call it a wrap for now. But uh, yeah, um, some underside action on the next episode, finish off the drop targets. And we are going to be pretty much at the finish line. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.